coming to the Landmark Hotel today for a pretty special press conference. As you can see from the people who are up on the stage, this is going to be one of the major events of the early months of 2019, a fight which we're looking forward to immensely. Terence Crawford, who is certainly one of the pound-for-pound -pound best boxers in the world today, defending his WBO welterweight title against Amir Khan. And those of you who've followed Amir over the years, former world champion, and you know that he never seems to be in a dull fight. It promises to be a tremendous contest. I'm looking forward to it immensely, and I think it speaks volumes, the fact that there are so many reporters and television cameras, radio, microphones here today. It's an indicative of the, indicative of the stature of the fight, very special indeed, and being promoted by one of the greatest promoters the sport has ever seen. So before we start chatting among ourselves, I think it's only right that the microphone is with Mr. Bob Aram to tell us exactly what this means. The floor is yours, Bob. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I love this city. Uh, I love the enthusiasm that everybody here has in this country, uh, in this kingdom, for the sport of boxing. I think that's wonderful. And uh, this uh, event, which will take place in the United States, either in Madison Square Garden or at the MGM, we'll be deciding that uh, this week, uh, will be something special. Uh, when you have a, uh, a fighter of the caliber of Amir Khan, uh, who's represented this country so well, and he's facing uh, a young man who many consider to be pound for pound, the best fighter in the world, Terence Crawford, who comes not from one of our coasts, not from the east, not from New York or Philadelphia or California, but from the heartland of the country, Omaha, Nebraska, uh, who has made a tremendous name for himself in the sport. He has something really, really special. And I'm looking forward uh, to uh, promoting, along with my friend Eddie Hearn of uh, Matchroom, uh, boxing, this event, which will be uh, contested by these two young men, uh, Amir Khan, Terence Crawford, it should be a great event. Bob, you've uh, been uh, responsible for promoting many of the greatest names in the history of boxing over the last 30, 40 years. Before we talk specifically to the fighters themselves, you're obviously representing Terence, how good do you feel that he is? I think he's terrific. Uh, you know, people ask me that all along. You know, we were, we were privileged to promote both Terence and uh, Vasily Lomachenko, the Ukrainian fighter who's the lightweight champion. And people ask me uh, about both of these guys because they're both special. And when I talk about Terence, what I say is he is certainly the best welterweight that I've seen since Sugar Ray Leonard. And I would make him uh, comparable, maybe a little favorite, uh, if back in the days he fought against Ray, who was a great, great welterweight. Uh, but he's of that caliber, and that's really, really high praise for guys like Colin, who were around then, who remember uh, the greatness of Sugar Ray Lennon. I really believe that Terrence uh, matches up uh, with the uh, ability uh, of uh, uh, Sugar Ray Lennon. And so far as Ami is concerned, just tell us a bit about his standing in the United States, because he's, he's got a, a big fan base over there. Amir Khan in the United States is known for never, ever having a poor performance. He's a gutty fighter. He probably has skills that of the top level. He's a master boxer with very, very fast hands. Uh, but every fight that he's been in, 
people want to see because he's a true warrior and he gives a great account of himself in the ring. Now you say that uh, you're going to be co-promoting with Matchroom Boxing. Frank Smith, who's alongside me here, is the CEO of uh, Matchroom Boxing. And uh, just tell us, first of all, because obviously people out there and people watching online have been saying, yeah, great fight. They've also been saying, when's he going to fight Kel Brook? That's been up there as well. So, so far as Matchroom are concerned, tell us about the importance of this for Amir and why the decision was taken to go this way. Thanks, Sean. Firstly, I'd just before we go on to that, I'd just like to say what a pleasure it is to be working with Bob Arum and Top Rank Boxing and Amir Khan Promotions on an event of this magnitude. Um, I think today's obviously about this fight. You know, it's sure. an important fight for Amir's career. Um, Amir had the option, obviously, to fight Kel and had the option to fight Terence Crawford. You know, you can't knock him. He's taking on one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. Um, who knows, maybe the Kel Brook fight happens down the road, but I think that's, that's for another day. That's our job now to find someone else for Kel Brook. But I think this is, you know, th today's about this fight, which is an important fight for both of these guys' careers. And it is a, a massive and eye-catching fight. You know, I mean, I've, I've obviously commentated for many years over in the UK, so I can say how appealing this is and what tremendous value Amir has given to the British boxing market for so many years. But from a promoter's perspective, what's it like working with the fellow? No, he's a great person to deal with. Obviously, we signed uh, Amir, joined the team, I think it was December 2017. So we had two shows in 2018, a sold out Echo Arena show, and then a huge night in Birmingham as well. Came back, looked great in both of those nights. Obviously working with uh, Joe Goosen, I think he'll talk about his training, but I think he's gonna go back with Virgil Hunter for this fight, which will be great, great for him to, to be back with uh, Virgil, you know, um, and they'll be working on the game plan as I said, it's a, it's a very tough fight for Amir, but he's, he's never stood away or he's never shied away from huge fights. You go back to Canelo before he, he joined us, that was a massive fight, he went straight in there. He's doing the same thing here, he's fighting the best and he always has done that, so you have to commend him for that. And he's gonna, as he always does, he's gonna give 100%. You know, he's, he's boxed away so many times, that isn't, gonna, that isn't gonna affect him at all. He's gotta go in there, he's gonna work on a game plan and, it, and he wants to become Win that, win that WBO world title. Right, well, let's uh, hear from the two fighters. Champion in a moment, Terence. First of all, by virtue of the fact that we're here in London, let's hear from Amir and why you have chosen to take on somebody who, by common consent, is one of the great boxers in the world today. Why did you take the decision to fight Terence? Uh, first of all, I want to say a big thanks for Bob. To, uh, to Bob for coming here uh, and Terence. Uh, I think, you know, for my legacy, uh, I think it's a brilliant fight. Terence is a great name. He's a big name in boxing, one of the best pound-for-pound fighters in the world. I got the opportunity, so I'm gonna take it. Um, I had another fight there, which was um, with Kel Brook, which um, a lot of people are talking about. To me, this is another big fight, which is for world title. I couldn't turn down. Um, and it'll put me up in the world, in the world of power rankings. Um, you know, styles make fights, and maybe the last fight didn't look my best, but I need fights which are gonna make me wanna win and wanna prove myself, and this is a fight against Crawford where I have to prove myself. I think there's a year difference in age, so you know, even though I've been, in, I've been around for a long, long time, we, the, the, it's not like I'm past my best, I've still got the best years ahead of me. Um, but I'm going to train very hard for this fight. Um, I know that I'm up against a great name, a big name, a dangerous fighter. If I take it, if I take it lightly, I'll get hurt. But I know that I have to work very hard in this fight. And, and I can win this fight. Otherwise, I wouldn't be taking it. And it's at welterweight. And I guess you'd say my best performances have been at welterweight? Correct, yeah. So um, in the 147th round division, I am unbeaten. Um, and I've had the best performances from the Alexanders to the Clausos and I've, by beating those guys at 147, I feel comfortable at this weight. Um, and also, uh, Terrence, I know he's a switch hitter. He's a southpaw, I have a 100% record against southpaws. Um, and, you know, like I said, Styles make fights and I think he has, a, he has a great style. He's a very unorthodox fighter, but I think he'll just 
gel well against the style of are you confident you can make 147 comfortably still? Because yeah. obviously you fought as, as high as middleweight against Canelo. Yeah, when I fought against Canelo, um, that weight wasn't the right weight for me. Um, I just wanted to challenge myself. And I think I've tried to uh, bite off too much. Um, but I think this is the ideal weight for me. 147 pounds is the weight that I like fighting at. I feel naturally bigger at, I feel stronger at and the speed's there, the movement's there and everything. And so this is my ideal weight. I'm gonna go back to Virgil Hunter, who's my trainer, who was a little sick for the last two fights. That's the reason I didn't work with him. I'm gonna go back to training camp with him. We, he's also happy with me taking this fight against Crawford. He knows it's a dangerous fight, but he, you know, he, he knows I'm capable to win this fight. As long as I work hard and stay focused throughout the whole fight, it's a, it's a good fight for me. Okay, we'll talk a bit more about you getting back and, and uh working with Virgil in a few minutes, but let's say good morning to Terence. First of all, great to see you here, champion. Thanks for having me. What's it like sitting there, hearing a promoter of the stature of Bob Arum alongside you, saying such great words about you? Oh, it's great to just uh, let you know how much confidence he has in my abilities. And he's, uh, you know, he's saying that you're, you rank in the same breath a Sugar Ray Leonard. You must have seen a lot of Sugar Ray Leonard on film. How does it feel being put in that sort of company? Man, it's, it's like a blessing. You know, um, I worked very hard to get to where I am right now and to be mentioned in those same categories with those great champions. It just tells where my career is heading. And now with the potential of having a fight against Samia, either at Madison Square Garden or the MGM, two of the great venues of world boxing. You know, when you walk out there for that level of fight, what's it gonna feel like for that? No other than any other fight. Uh, it's gonna be a ring, two fighters gonna get in the center of it, and we're gonna do what we gotta do to get the job done. And, um, very confident in 420 and be victorious. Tell us your thoughts about Amir as a fighter. You know, you're, you're undefeated now in 34 fights, is that right? right. And Amir undefeated as, as a welterweight. Tell us how highly you rate him, or perhaps you don't rate him. Tell us what you think about Amir as a fighter. Oh, he's a, he's a great fighter. I always say Amir was a great fighter and it was a tough fight for us uh, if we ever met up. Being that when I was at 135, he was at 140. Then when I moved up, he moved up. So we never had the opportunity to see each other until now. And we're going to see whose style is going to be telling from fight day. So you kind of always thought this fight might happen somewhere down the line? Correct. What is it uh, that you see in the way in which he fights? What do you think? his big attributes that you've got to cope with? Well, everybody knows Amir Khan is uh, fast. He's a fast puncher. He's a great boxer. Uh, but I just think my, my smartness and my timing and my way to adjust is what's going to lead me to victory. And you're going to be presumably thinking that when it comes to punching, that you're going to take his He's not going to take yours. We shall see. <laughs> do, you, do you look at him and say, this is a fighter who is still super dangerous? Or is this a guy who you've taken because maybe you feel his best days are behind him? Not at all. Not at all. I never look over any opponent, ever. <coughs> and yes, Amir Khan is still dangerous. He's still uh, fast. He's still got the experience. He did in welterweight division longer than me. He didn't fall some of the biggest names out there to fight. So, of course, you know, he's going to be dangerous because you know what he's doing in the ring. But we're not taking no shortcuts in this fight. I know you, you've got a lot, clearly got a lot of respect for Amir. If you were to tell everybody out here who maybe has not seen you, what are your biggest attributes as a boxer? What makes you special? Tell us what makes you what you are. I just think my way to be able to adjust in the blink of an eye, uh, 
I done fought so many styles in my life, and I've been unable to adjust to each and every one of them and to overcome each and every fighter that I ever fought. There's never been a fighter that I couldn't figure out. So that's just how I look at it. And when, when you were a kid coming through, who were the fighters you would look up to and say, that's how I want to be? Well, I never looked up to any fighter and said, that's how I want to be. I always had fighters that I admire, their skills and talents, like Floyd, Way Floyd Mayweather, Lloyd Jones Jr., Sugar Ray Leonard, Penel Whitaker, those type of fighters. And your, your trainer, Brian McIntyre, working alongside you, before we, before we hear from Brian, just tell us uh, how, he, how it is working with him. Oh, it's great. Uh, I've been knowing Bo, well, Bo been knowing me before I was even born, and he knows me in and out. So it's like something that I can't explain working with him, being that he's the only coach, him and a previous coach that passed, that I ever worked with. Brian, you got a microphone? Yeah, I got one. Tell us uh, from your perspective as, uh, as trainer of uh, the guy who Bob says goes down as one of, the, one of the great fighters. Tell us what it's like working with him. It's an honor to work with Terrence. Uh, like I always tell him, you know, when we get together one-on-one -on -one and it's our time because we've got other trainers. I don't, I don't want you guys to forget about Sal Diegas and Red Spikes. Those are the two assistant trainers, my right-hand man and my left-hand man. Those guys plays a big part in this training camp and Terrence's career too. But when I work with Terrence, it's not me telling him what to do, it's a class. Because we both in there fighting. Things he can see that I may not see, things I can see that he may not see. So it's always a team effort. Also, the other coaches can see something too. So it's like going to school. When he was an amateur, he was in, you know, high school, now he's a pro. He had, we're working on our PhD, so we hasn't we haven't failed yet. So I believe right now in my heart we're not gonna fail now. Is he a good listener? Is he a good learner? Hell or, yeah. or are you learning from him? No, no, we both learn from each other. Hell yeah, he's a good listener because he hasn't lost yet. And we've heard what Terence thinks about his you know greatest attributes. What makes him special? From your perspective, what makes him up there? His boxing IQ. And when you are going to be facing Amir, who you talk about, you talk about, or Terence has talked about, his speed and his boxing skills, how do you replicate that in the gym? Uh, you just, you know, you, you find the best sparring partners out there, and then uh, with, uh, that can relate him the best way they can. And then you just adjust to it in the ring. You, you get four or five different sparring partners, because you know, you want the five sparring partners to be fresh because it looks like he's always fresh. He's, he always got hand speed. He got good feet. You think he's still getting better? Is he as good as a, as a welterweight as he was in the lower weights? Me personally, I think he hit his ceiling. I mean, going back to uh, going back to Virgil, who you've not worked with for the last couple of fights because he's not been well. How good will it be to get back with him? Because you seem to have a, a great a great relationship with Virgil Hunter. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to get back with Virgil. Um, obviously, he was sick. Um, that's why I had to move to Joe Houston, who was also a great trainer. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've had a great career with Virgil. Um, he knows how I work. We've been together for about six, seven years now. And um, I think the only fight we lost together was against um, Canelo, which... You know, um, we know he was the bigger guy, he was the stronger guy, but when it comes to boxing skills, I still feel that I was outpointing him till till that um, till he caught me with the big shot. Um, so Virgil knows me quite well. Uh, also with Virgil, we have my strength condition, which is um, Tony Brady. So we'll be working with him as well. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to be in the best shape ever. You know, to win this fight, I have to be in good shape. It's gonna be a very very hard fight. Um, but, you know, I know as long as I work hard and I train hard, I could walk into that ring with my head, head held high. How do you replicate this fella in the gym? Um, you know, he, he's very unorthodox. He's, um, he's a switch hitter. 
strong, hits hard with both hands. He's quick, has a lot of speed as well. So we'll have to bring in a lot of fuse. We'll have to bring quite a lot of sparring partners in to replicate his style. Um, watch a lot of videos um, and go through breaking him down. Really. Do you think he's technically the best fighter you've been in against? Um, yeah, he's one of. I have to say he's high up, up there uh, as one of the best I fought technically. Um, I fought a lot of guys. I've, this is I've had thirty-seven fights, so I had a lot of fights. Um, so, but we're not taking this fight lightly. Um, I see this fight being probably one of my hardest fights. I'm going to go into this fight believing it's the hardest fight I'm going to be ever in. So. When, I, when I'm in training camp for this fight, I'm going to make sure I train very, very hard. Um, like I said, in my last couple of fights, I've been against lower caliber fighters. It's very hard to motivate yourself when you fought at the highest level in boxing. But with this fight, it is at the highest level of boxing, so it's going to only motivate me and make me work harder. You've got him sitting by your side about six feet away. If you're going to look into his eye now, what would you say is going to happen? Do it. What's going to happen on April no, the 20th? Basically, we, we, we're professional, you know, we, we're professional fighters. And um, I'm sure Terence will agree. Um, I'm a bit too old for trash talking. I like to get in the ring and just do my business and show who the best is. Uh, I'm sure, you know, he's going to be ready for the fight. We step in the ring and we let our skills do the talking. Instead of talking and talking trash to one another, I'm 32 now. I'm not the young... A uh, kid who had the who had all that energy to talk and hype up fights. I don't need to hype up the fights. My style, my boxing skills, hype fights up. So, you know, we're just gonna be ready for the fight no matter what. Uh, Terence brings, we'll have answers for. I'm sure Terence is gonna have answers as well, and we'll just take from there. I've got to ask the same question to Terence as well. You've got the guy alongside you. I'm not asking you necessarily to get into trash talk unless you want to, but have you got any message for Amir about what he's likely to face? on April the 20th. Well, it's going to be a great fight, you know. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fireworks in there. Uh, I'm not known for talking unless somebody, you know, disrespect me. Uh, I respect him there, he respect me, and that's going to make for a great fight come fight night. Okay, before we open it to the floor, and we've got uh, a roving microphone to go around, I think, to anybody who wants to ask questions, just another word from uh, Bob Arum. We've heard from both guys. I can't wait for this fight. I think it's technically going to be brilliant. How much are you personally, never mind as a promoter, but as a, as a boxing fan, how much are you looking forward to this? I'm really looking forward to this fight. I think the fighters will fight tremendously well, both of them, in the ring. And I really appreciate that they're not engaging in trash talk, uh, not profanity, because we don't need that in the sports. They're two sportsmen, they're conducting themselves as sportsmen, and in the ring, they will show what their skills are, and that's the way it should be. You all are in for to see one terrific, terrific fight on April the 20th. Uh, I can't wait uh, for that fight. Uh, I know that a lot of people will be coming over from here uh, to watch the fight. A lot of people will be coming from Omaha, Nebraska, whether it's to New York or Las Vegas, to watch the fight. There will be partisans uh, in the audience cheering on their men, and that's great. But the, men, but the two men are good sportsmen and I'm very proud how they're conducting themselves as sportsmen. Thank you very much, Bob. Right, we've got microphones out among you, so please shout out any questions for anybody here, and uh, let's keep this going for a little while. Who have we got? Anybody? Go on, Colin. Roll back the years. It's always used to be this day. It was always Colin Hart who started the, broad, the, the press conferences. Terence, you've seen Amir fight, I'm sure, many times. Do you think it would be better to fight him at Southpaw or Orthodox? It really don't, man. It was had a nightmare. One for Amir? Yes. Can Frank or Bob clarify what the situation is regarding British television for this fight? 
What was the question? The question is, can you clarify what the situation is regarding British television? No, that will be decided again this week. Uh, we, you know, you, you, you're blessed in here with uh, uh, great outlets. Uh, which one will be uh, utilized uh, by us? Uh, Todd DeBuff, De who's the president of the company, is dealing here with uh, both uh, television outlets, and we'll have an announcement on that uh, by the end of the week, or at worst, the beginning of next week. Yes, fire away. Amir, my, my question is for you. So, how would you deal with Cross Crawford's stance when he goes from a southpaw and goes to an orthodox? How would you deal with that in between, and do you think you'll have the, the correct sparring in the lead up to that, is that something you're looking at as danger or? Um, I think, you know, we'll have to get best of both worlds. I mean, we'll have to get a good southpaw and a good, and a, and a good orthodox fighter as well. We'll have to change it around a little bit. Uh, we'll have, nowadays, a lot of sparring partners you can get that are switch hitters anyway. So um, I think finding the ideal of sparring partners shouldn't really be a problem, especially in America. There's a lot of fighters there. So I think uh, my coach is already on to that. Yeah, next. Danny? Um, I've actually got a question for Bomex, so you might have to jump back up on the stage, sorry. How do you see the type of fight between Terence and Amir changing with Amir going back to Virgil Hunter from Joe Goose, and what type of fight would it be now that it wouldn't have been under Goose? And I really don't see, uh, I don't see the difference uh, if you go back to Virgil, or if you stay, or wherever you do, if you get his dad, or whoever you get. We know what Terrence is going to do, and um, I just see it like that. Uh, yeah, um, sorry. Yes, carry on. Go on. Um, a question for Amir. Thank you. Um, uh, Amir, um, you know, there was a big negotiation with Bob a couple of years ago, and um, when he was promoting Manny Pacquiao, he might have got that fight. Um, a couple of years before that, there was a big um, negotiation. You were trying to get Floyd Mayweather. Obviously, Terence is kind of arguably in the top three in the world, pound for pound. Um, is this that fight for you, N precluding the Canelo fight because he was two weight divisions above you? Is this the fight for you that kind of replaces those two that you actually didn't get in your career? Yeah, you can say that. You know, I was always chasing that big fight at the uh, division, uh, weight division that I was happy uh, making. Uh, and I was comfortable at so this is this is in a way a fair fight for me when I'm fighting someone who's uh, my division who's probably one of the best pound for fighters out there he's, he's, he's unbeaten um, yeah you know I mean we tried to make the biggest fights in boxing and obviously um, that didn't happen but look this is the type of fighter I am I want to be in the in the in the, in the I want to be fighting the best I want to be mixed with the best um, and yeah, and, and you know, I enjoy mixing it with the best. I mean, Terence, up there, Terence is up there with the best. And when I got the phone call for this fight, um, I could have said no to it because it's got a world title on the line. It's up, I'm not fighting an unbeaten fighter. And a lot of people were saying to me, well, you have Kel Brook there as well. But to me, this is probably a globally a bigger fight. So are you more lit for this fight than you would have been to fight Kel Brook? Correct, yeah. Thank you. Next, please. Anybody wants a microphone? Hold your hand up. Okay, here we go. Question for Brian, trainer. Yeah. Um, you said that Khan has like, hit his ceiling. Can you elaborate as to why you're saying he's hit a ceiling? And obviously Khan's saying that basically he's been going to training and he's going to do better on all these things. You don't seem to believe for some reason. Well, I just look at uh, the type of fighter that he is. Don't get me wrong, he's still dangerous. He's still got uh, hand speed, good foot speed, but he's been in there. He's been knocked out a couple times. He's been in there with some of the best at a higher weight um, and in, in the same weight. So I just feel like his mentality, his mind mentality, is just hit that, hit that ceiling right there to where if he got to get in the trenches, I think he's just going to you know, fail at that point. Next, where are we? Down at the back again, Danny. Oh, sorry, who's got a microphone? 
Um, Bob, uh, Terence, and Brian, welcome to the UK. Uh, question for Terence: um, With the uh, caliber of opponent that you face in the past, you see, you see this fight with Amir Khan, one of the biggest high-profile fighters in the UK, as your toughest test to date. And also, do you see this as the um, kind of marquee fight that you need to show why you're a formidable asset to the welterweight division? Of course, uh, given the, the level of competition that he's been fighting at. And, uh, the previous fights before his last two. Um, you can arguably say this is Terrence Crawford's toughest fight to date, but like I always say, we never know until we fight the fight. Next. Uh, question for Amir. Um, this is the last of your three fight deal with Match Rare, and we didn't get the Brook fight. Uh, if you don't sign with, uh, re sign with Match Rare, how, what's the likelihood of the, uh, the book fight ever happening? I mean, I think he's still there, you know. Um, if this fight didn't come, then I think it would have been the book fight. But um, I think the book fight is still going to be there. And um, it could be after this fight. Who knows? I mean, it's still a fight I'd love to have. Yeah, there's one, one down at the back. Is there, who's got the microphone? Yeah, far away. Hi, Terence. Welcome to London. Um, we've seen Amir Khan lost before, but we've never really seen him get outboxed. Um, could you be the, one of the first person you feel to outbox him instead of just knocking him out? Well, of course. Uh, looking at the type of fighters that he's fought in the past, that was boxers. I don't believe that they have the same boxing tools that I have, I should say. Uh, closest guy that I would believe was Zab Judah, but to me Zab Judah was past his prime. Um, I feel like me right now is a better, better boxer than anybody that he's ever faced today. Yep, yeah, carry on. Um, Boxervoice.com, EJ Boxer Live. Question for Amir Khan. Amir Khan, um, in the past, yeah, um, your opponents, uh, uh, Lamont Peterson, um, fighting inside. Um, have you addressed them, uh, what most of the people consider a weakness in your game? Because you have a very good outside boxing. And obviously, Terence Crawford has very good inside boxing. Have you addressed that to go and get one of the best pound for pound boxers in the world? Yeah, I mean, it's something we've been working on for the last couple of fights. And um, the way I look at it is if you don't have to be in the pocket, then you can box from the outside. But I mean, I, I need to work on it even more. I mean, uh, I'm still not a complete fighter, and I think that's what, once we get back into training camp, these are the things that we're going to be working on and perfecting, basically. So, come fight night, we'll be, we'll be, we'll, know, we'll have the answers for everything that, you know, Terence does. If he wants to fight the inside, we'll fight the inside. If he wants to keep it long, we'll keep it long as well. Right, you've been waiting a while. Down there by the window, your turn. Thank you very much. Uh, Robert Harding from One More Round. Uh, guys, we have a Hall of Fame promoter in the room at the moment. Um, a question to Mr. Aaron. Bob, out of all the fighters that you've had over the years, who do you compare Terence to at this stage in his career? And who do you think he could, he could reach in terms of his long-term aspirations? What was the last part of the case? Out of all the fighters that you've had over the years, many, many great fighters, who do you liken Terence to at this stage of his career? Yeah. Like I said, I mean, I go back, uh, I've promoted a lot, a lot of people in the welterweight division, uh, really good fighters, Wilfred Benitez, Donald Curry, but Terence reminds me most of Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray was a, a absolutely a tremendous welterweight, as is Terence, and I really believe that if you could turn back the clock and Terence could fight Ray uh, during uh, the, the early 1980s, that Terence uh, would be victorious. But obviously that's not going to happen. But Terence, uh, I make him absolutely comparable, if not better, than Sugar Ray Leonard. Thank you. 
Any more? Yep. Two more down here at the back. I've got another question for Bob. Bob, a lot of people in the media have said it's going to be difficult to get the really big fights for Terence at 147 because so many of the other 147 fighters are with PBC and other TV channels, it makes it difficult to negotiate. Does this big fight that you've made with Amir Khan disprove that theory, that there are still big fights out there for Terence at 147? That's a really good question. I think what you're alluding at is look what's happening in boxing. All the other promoters are cooperating with each other. You, this match wouldn't have happened without Matchroom and Eddie Hearn. Frank will tell you that. They cooperated with us. We're doing another fight down the line with a fighter named Rochelle, 130 pound champion, against Oscar De La Hoya's fighter, Francisco Vargas. The only promoter in the world that will not allow his fighters to fight anybody else is Al Heyman and PBC. So don't say that promoters, you know, won't make fights, that promoters protect their fighters. There is one culprit, one culprit, and one culprit only in boxing, and that's Al Heyman and PBC. And if he wants to stick his people in this really small bundle that he has, fighting each other, not fighting, he's entitled to do it, but he's hurting the sport of boxing. Yep, yeah, carry on. Um, Terence, it's a pleasure to have you here in London. Um, just amongst the welterweight division, I know there's quite a buzz at the moment, some great fighters in the mix. I know you and Spence are being talked about as the top two welterweights. I personally believe you have his number, but looking at Amir Khan right now, where do you rank him? W would you put him in the top five, in the world's weight, top five? Ah, man, that's a lot of good world's weights out there. The top six, top seven. You know the time where to wait, man. It's probably a question for Amir as well, that one. Do you rate yourself as being in the top five and ready to make the step up? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you always have to believe in yourself. <laughs> and I've been doing that from day one. Um, I mean, that's one of the reasons I got so far. Um, from probably the Olympic days and then going to America when, when they all probably doubted me doing anything. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, I, I know at least I'm in the top ten. I'm, I'm, up there as one of the best uh, welterweights out there. So, I mean, that's, like Terence said, there are some great welterweight fighters. You know, you got you got some big names. You got Terence himself. You've got um, Manny Pacquiao there. You've got um, Spence. I mean, there's some big. I mean, this division is uh, a tough, tough division to win. So, and to become number one. At, so. But we, I'm, I'm glad I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I'm in this division, especially in the, at this time where I think the welterweight division in the world is probably the best division to be in. So, so yeah, I would say it's probably the toughest division as well. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here today. Last question. Oh, are we having one more? Yeah, Dr. Okay. Mark Prince, um, OBE from the Kyan Prince Foundation. Just a question for Terence. Um, as a former fighter myself, I know that whenever you go in a fight, you know what your opponent's really gonna, area your opponent's really gonna test you in. What challenge do you really think Khan can bring to you that's gonna bring out the best of you and test you in? What area would that be? Like I said, we never, we never know until we fight the fight. Uh, we don't overlook anybody. We don't go in the ring, half ass and uh, training, so. We know he's going to come with his A game. We know he's going to bring a lot of speed to the table. So we never know until we get in there. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming today. We're going to be doing some head-to-head -head photographs, and there'll be opportunities for the television cameras and various reporters to do one-on-one -on -one interviews as well.